Smith, and I'm the 2019-2020 Allen Parish Teacher of the Year, also representing Kinder High School. The lesson you will see today features my English 2 Honors class, which will include 9th and 10th grade students. Today, I'm going to teach the analysis of character development using Alice Walker's short story, Everyday Use. This lesson can be found in our state's ELA guidebook under the unit entitled Henrietta's Dance. The objective of this lesson today would be for students to trace how complex characters develop over the course of a text. My students will successfully analyze why characters change or remain static and how that contributes to the theme of the text. Prior to this lesson, my students spent a few class periods reading and annotating the text. Their annotations were guided and they looked specifically at character development and character descriptions. Yesterday, my students participated in group work, focusing on finding an overall theme in the text. They did a great job working in their groups and determined the overall theme of the text by the end of the class. This lesson connects to my overall goal as their English teacher, because what I want more than anything is to build strong, independent, knowledgeable readers and writers. When my students learn how to analyze character development throughout a fictional text, I know they are making those necessary steps to becoming successful readers. I'm confident that this lesson fits in with meeting that goal beautifully. Something to keep in mind while watching this lesson is that my English 2 Honors class is made up of 9th and 10th graders, and there may be a slight age difference between my students. This also translates in the depth of some of their thinking and their writing. I have made adaptations to make sure all of my students are ensured success at every level of comprehension and skill set. I was intentional in how I grouped my students for this lesson, and I feel like they are each assigned to a group that will only help them meet the objectives that have been set for this particular lesson. Each member of the group brings a different level of understanding to their classmates and will be assigned certain tasks to meet that understanding. Lastly, I hope you will enjoy watching this lesson. Teaching the analysis of character develop is one of my favorite reading skills to focus on in my classroom, and I'm hopeful that my students will not only enjoy this lesson, but master the objectives set before them and learn what it means to analyze character development. Thank you. writing. So your bell ringer for today, be sure to write the date, January 10th. I want you to create a short story. In that story, I want you to create a specific character. We're focusing on characterization today. So of course you guys are going to write about a character. I want you to include descriptive words and phrases that tell me what your character looks like. Kind of like in everyday use, how mama is described as a big boned large woman. There's your example. So make sure you describe your character similar to how mama is described in everyday use, something along those lines, be descriptive. Uh, what kind of a personality does this character have? And what their biggest fear might be? I want you to include that in your writing. Make sure your story is five to eight sentences in length and write in complete sentences. Go ahead and get started. I'm gonna give y'all five minutes. I need two people to volunteer to write missing work forms for Stryker and Lily. Anybody want to volunteer today? Riley? Anybody else? Lauren, thank you. All right, Stryker. to share anything about the character they have written about today. Is there anybody in here who wants to share? Josh, are you ready to share what you have written? All right, I'm really, really excited to hear this. Go for it. The forest was a picture of perfection. The trees appeared as shiny emerald green, the water a glistening topaz, and the, shine, and the sunshine was a gold that covered with elegance, grandeur, and no sense of discrimination. It covered all and everything together was near perfect. The only blemish in the forest was a single area covered in fog. It was eerily quiet. The wind did not wh didn't whistle, the animals didn't sing, and the plants drank with water as though they were in sorrow. The entire forest seemed to be in mourning, and all was due to the unbridled emotions of a single woman who stared at a palm. It was almost as if nature felt exactly as she did. There she knelt, staring at her own reflection. She stared as though the very nature of herself were an oddity, 
feeling the movements that she may have done in everyday life were foreign to him to her. She stared as her skinny, pale hand reached up into her hair and felt it. He wants beautiful golden locks were stained by dirt and mud, just as her turn, torn and messy clothes were. Her face, while obviously attractive, seemed off. It was as though, even if one did not know her, they could tell that the frown adorning her lips was not indigenous. It seemed as though her face was not used to anything but a smile, so anything but seemed odd. But the worst part were her eyes. If a picture is worth a thousand words, and the eyes are the windows to the soul, then she spoke volumes with nothing. For it seemed that her eyes were a picture of nothing, no emotion, thought, or life. That soon changed. Her eyes, after staring at her own reflection, seemed to understand something. They hated that what was being reflected back to them. She would stare at her reflection, and the longer she did, so the more her eyes burned and wished to set the picture of flame. But as would happen with any other fire, they were quenched by a source of water. Her eyes streamed from her face, so much so that it seemed she may have been the source for this very pond. And again, as though she were connected to nature, the very sky began to cry. The tears rained down, and the image in the pond was distorted, and she looked at it. Had anyone else seen it, it would have described the image changing from that of a tattered young blossom to a horrible viral monstrosity. But all she saw was what she had seen from the beginning. Very good. And those words don't even, yeah, those words don't even accurately describe how good that writing is. I think that's puffball worthy. What do y'all think? Yeah. Yes, I agree. I think that's a puffball worthy piece of writing right there. So today, I think you've got a, an idea of what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be focusing on character development. All right, we're going to focus on how you analyze character development in fiction. So let's look at our objectives for the day before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of it all. So today we will read a literary text, which we have already read every day use, but we're going to look back over it a little bit more. We're going to determine theme and characterization from that. We're going to identify different character traits found in Alice Walker's everyday use. We're going to look at Mama. We're going to look at Maggie. We're going to look at Dee a little bit more, even though we don't really like her that much. We're going to make inferences based on textual evidence found in everyday use. We're going to trace how complex characters develop over the course of a text. How do they change? Or do they change? Do these characters in everyday use change? Or do they remain the same? We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. And then last but not least, we're going to analyze why characters change or remain static and how that contributes to the theme of the text as a whole. Okay, so we've got a lot on our plates today. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've, we've got our narrator, we've got Mama. And what's going on with Mama? What's happening with her? She's defending those blankets. Okay, she's defending <laughs> those blankets. Good. She's defending those quilts with everything in her. Okay, so does anyone want to elaborate on what Aiden just said? What's Mama trying to, who is Mama trying to keep the quilts for? Maggie. Maggie. Okay, so she is trying to keep those quilts with Maggie one of her daughters, and she's trying to keep them from who? Dee. Dee, who is her other daughter. daughter, right? Yes. Okay, what is her reason as to why she wants to keep the quilts with Maggie? Someone tell me. Want one person? All right, Layla. She feels like Maggie would put them at better use and take care of them better than All right. they would. All right, very good. All right, so we've summarized the text. Let's look at theme. Theme is defined as a main idea or an underlying meaning of a literary work, which may be stated directly or indirectly. Have any of you swam in a body of water that had a current, like a river? Yes, a few of us, some are saying no, but those of you who have will understand what I mean. With me, for me, as a reader, something that I, I, I think of, I compare theme to, is the undercurrent. That current that could possibly pull at your feet, does anybody know what I'm talking about? There, sometimes there's a strong undercurrent. It feels like you're being pulled the opposite direction. Theme will do that. When you're reading a piece of fiction, the theme will grab hold of you in different parts of the story and will kind of say, hey, pay attention to this. This is going to tell you the overall meaning or underlying meaning in this story. Look at this. This is the deeper meaning of the text. That's a good way of thinking of theme as an undercurrent. I want to point y'all's attention to the notes part of our board real quick uh, before we get into what we're actually going to do today. Um, so some terms you guys need to remember as we're moving forward in our group work. Characterization is an explanation of the details about a character in a story. You guys have been annotating those details rigorously the last few days. And now let's look at two words that are very important. Static characters and dynamic characters. A static character is a character who does not change. Off the top of your head right now, is there a static character in everyday use? Y'all yes. are shaking your heads yes. Who would that be? 
D, I agree with you. Very good. And dynamic characters are characters who change. Does anyone want to tell me who they think a dynamic character in everyday use could be? Mama. Ooh, mama. And we're going to talk about that later in your groups. As I walk through y'all's groups, I'm going to talk with you guys about what it is she does or what choices she makes in this short story that tell me she's a dynamic character. Let's look at those last two uh, terms you got to remember. Character traits, that's the qualities and features that make a person unique. Um, and then the last word there, inference. That's an intelligent guess. You guys have been making inferences pretty much all year, but a lot the last few days with this short story. So remember those terms moving forward in your group work. All right, so let's get into what we're going to do today. First, my teaching assistant is going to pass out your character charts for the day. Hannah. Hannah's going to go ahead and pass this out to you guys. Please put your name, today's date, and fifth hour at the top. Today is January the 10th. So she's passing this out. All you need is something to write with and everyday use. You guys can probably go ahead and put away your theme T-charts while you're at it so your, your desk isn't so loaded. So um, let's talk about this chart you guys need to fill out. So we have an acronym we use when we're talking about char uh, character analysis or describing a character. The acronym is STEAL, S-T-E-A-L. If everyone will look at the chart with me, under the part that is titled trait. The first thing you're going to look at is the speech of the character. What do they sound like? How do they speak? What kind of words do they use? Are they educated? Are they a little bit slower? You know, share with that group over there and I'm going to kind of close out with this thought um, and we will return to this tomorrow. This will be one of the first things we discuss coming into class. So don't worry, this is part one of two. But um, that part of the page that y'all bracketed off where she talks about the quilts and um, Dee tells her mom, Maggie's backwards enough, she would probably take them and actually use them for everyday use. And that's where the title comes from. She'd actually put them on her bed and use them for what they were intended. And her mama says, well, I should hope she does. She asks Dee, what do you intend to do with them? And she says, I'm going to hang them on the walls. I, I talked to them back there and I had asked you guys yesterday to tell me what the quilts were symbolic of. I shared with them, I had a thought yesterday that these quilts might be symbolic of love. Because when you love someone and you tell them you love them, that's one part of it. But do you show them you love them? Do you actually put, you know, do you, do you actually actively show it? Yeah. Okay, or is it just hanging on your wall? Is it just hanging on your wall or are you actually putting it to everyday use? Something to think about and we're going to return to that tomorrow. Well, I believe that my students met every objective set for them today. I think that lesson went great. And I know this because they successfully answered my guided reading questions throughout the lesson, and they had excellent discussions amongst their groups. I was also able to see their character autopsies coming to life as they analyzed the different characters in Alice Walker's everyday use. So I also had visual confirmation that my students were mastering the objectives that were set before them. If I were to do anything differently next time, I might give them a few more tasks to accomplish as a group. While they were focusing on filling out their character charts and completing their character autopsies, I felt like I could give them another task as well in completing a writing assignment. So next time, I think I might add that component to their group work so they have a chance to put their thoughts and work into words. After today, my students will continue their group work and finish their charts and autopsies. Once they are finished, they will present their group findings as they were assigned to different characters. This will help meet some of our speaking and listening state standards. And lastly, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate this opportunity to share a small glimpse into my classroom with all of you. So on behalf of myself, my students, Kinder High School and Allen Parish, thank you.